Chapter 8, Metamorphic Rocks. What is metamorphism? Metamorphism means a changed form, the transition of one rock into another by temperatures and or pressures unlike those in which it was formed. Changes in mineralogy and sometimes chemical composition may occur. Every metamorphic rock has a parent rock, the rock from which it was formed. Parent rocks can be igneous, sedimentary, or other metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic grade is the degree to which the parent rock changes during metamorphism. Processes from low grade, or low temperature and pressure, to high grade, or high temperatures and pressures. During metamorphism, the rock must remain essentially solid. It never actually thoroughly melts. So here's a parent rock of shale, the sedimentary rock. In a low grade metamorphism, of low temperature and pressure, it can become slate, okay, which has tightly packed grains. Okay? Also, also becomes more dense. Parent rock of granodiorite, happen between a granite and a diorite, under high metamorphism and strong compressional forces, can become gneiss, which is a folded, this is actually a folded gneiss, where you see these bands where the minerals start to separate out by mineral type to form bands. Heat is the most important agent. Recrystallization is the process of forming new stable minerals larger than the original. Two sources of heat, one the geothermal gradient, which is an increase in temperature with depth, about 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer, and contact metamorphism, rising hot mantle plumes warm up the rock that they're traveling past. Mm. Confining pressure, forces are applied equally in all directions. This is analogous to water pressure, causes a space between mineral grains to close. Differential stress, forces are unequal in different directions, those stresses are greater in one direction than the others. Compressional stress. Rocks are squeezed as if in a vise, shortened in one direction and elongated in the other. Okay, so here we have confining pressure, which is so we have, we have basically variable pressure, so the pressure is equal in all directions. Okay, so the strata are just compacted. Okay, and if you have differential stress, more stress from side to side, let's say, rather than from up and down. Then the strata, it's compressed and deformed, it starts to fold. Chemically active fluids drive metamorphism. This enhances the migration of ions, aids in the recrystallization of existing minerals, and in some environments, fluids can transport mineral matter over considerable distances. The importance of parent rock. Most metamorphic rocks have the same overall, overall chemical composition as the original parent rock. Mineral makeup determines the degree to which each metamorphic agent will cause change. Textures describe the size, the shape, and the arrangement of the mineral grains. Metamorphic rocks can display preferred orientation of minerals, where the Pleiadian mineral grains exhibit parallel to subparallel alignment. Foliation describes any planar arrangement of mineral grains or structural features within a rock. Okay, so examples are parallel alignment of platy or elongated minerals. They form bands. Parallel alignment of flattened mineral grains or pebbles. Compositional banding of light and dark minerals. So dark minerals group together and the light minerals group together forming bands. Opening dark light, dark light. Cleavage where rocks can be easily split to slabs. Foliation can form in various ways including rotation of platy minerals. Recrystallization that produces new minerals perpendicular to the direction of maximum stress. And flattening spher spherically shaped grains. Okay, so here we have some, some nearly circle quartz grains, and under pressure, okay, they, they actually get flattened out, they elongate it. Rocky or slaty cleavage, rocks split into thin slabs, develops and beds a shell with low grade metamorphism. Okay, so that shell turns into slate, you can actually hammer apart the layers of that slate. So here, this, um, so a uh, metamorphic slate here is broken into slabs and then can be used as roofing tiles or, or paving stones in your garden. Schistosity. Palladium minerals are discernible with the unaided eye. Mica and chlorite flakes become, rec begin to recrystallize into large muscovite and biotite crystals. They get very shiny rock. So a planar or layered structure. Rocks have this texture referred to as a schist. Nisic texture. During high-grade metamorphism, ion migration results in the segregation of minerals into light and dark bands. Metamorphic rocks with this texture are called nice. Although foliated, nice do not usually split as easily as slates and schists. Non-foliated metamorphic rocks are composed of minerals that exhibit 
equal dimensional crystals and lack foliation. Develop environments where deformation is minimal. Porphoblastic textures, unusually large grains called porphyroblasts, are surrounded by a fine grain matrix of other minerals. Here's some porphyroblasts of garnet, okay, in a fine matrix. Slate, a very fine grain, excellent, has excellent rock cleavage, most often generated from low grade metamorphism of shale, mudstone, and siltstone. Phyllite, degree of metamorphism between slate and schist. Platy minerals are larger than in slate, but not large enough to see with the unaided eye. Glossy sheen, sheen to it, with wavy surfaces, exhibits rock cleavage. Schist, medium to coarse grain. Parent rock is shale, has undergone medium to high grade metamorphism. The term schist describes the texture. Palladium minerals, mostly micas, micas, predominate. Nice and shiny, can also, also can, claim, can contain porphyroblasts. Nice, medium to coarse grain metamorphic rock with a banded appearance. Result of high grade metamorphism, composed of light colored feldspar rich layers with bands of dark ferromagnesian minerals. Okay, so here we have our sedimentary um, shale here, clay minerals, very fine grain. Okay, so under some temperature and some pressure. A, under low metamorphic morphism becomes a slate. Okay, so the, um, the, um, each mineral starts to elongate and line up. Under more metamorphic uh, pressure, they tend to uh, become larger from fine grain to medium coarse to coarse grain. Okay, still lining up. Under major amounts of or high grade metamorphism, then they start to band out the dark versus the light. Okay. Non foliate rocks, marble, crystalline rocks from form from limestone or dolostone parent rock. Main mineral is calcite. Calcite is relatively soft, about three in the most scale. Used as a decorative and monument stone. Impurities in parent rocks provide a variety of colors, you know, the, the veins that you'll see in, in marbles. Quartzite formed from the parent rock of quartz rich sandstone. Quartz grains are fused together. Pure quartzite is white. Iron oxide may produce reddish or pink stains. Dark minerals may produce green or gray stains. So here's some quartz sandstone, then under some metamorphism becomes quartzite. So instead of individual sand grains, they recrystallize to form inter interlocking crystals. Hornfell's parent rock is shale or clay-rich rocks, and it's baked by intruding magma body. And here's our uh, common metamorphic rock chart. So this column shows our textures. Up here, the top half is our foliated rocks, okay, with our slate, our phyllite, and our schist, and our gneiss, and then our non-foliates, marble, quartzite, and hornfells. Contact or thermal metamorphism results in the rise in temperature when magma invades a host rock occurs in the upper crust, low pressure but high temperature. There's a zone of alteration, or the aureole forms, in the rock surrounding the magma. Okay, so here we have a magma chamber, that magma is trying to rise up, and it's heating the rock that's nearby. So those rocks start to change. This is the metamorphic area where you find, find that um, rock has been more metamorphosed. Hydrothermal metamorphism, chemical alteration caused by hot Iron-rich fluids circling through pore spaces and rock fractures typically occurs along the axes of mid-ocean ridges. Black smokers are the result of fluids gushing from the seafloor. So here we have our hydrothermal metamorphism along a mid-ocean ridge. Here's one of these, our black smokers spewing hot mineral-rich seawater. Okay. Burial metamorphism associated with thick sedimentary strata in, subsiding, in a subsiding basin. The Gulf of Mexico is a good example. So we have very, very thick sediments that gather in the Gulf of Mexico, and, and uh, they get so deep that there's so much temp, uh, pressure that they metamorphose. Subduction zone metamorphism. Sediments and ocean crusts are subducted fast enough that the pressure increases before the temperature. And then they start to metamorphose. Regional metamorphism produces the greatest quantity of metamorphic rock associated with mountain building and the collision of continental blocks. So here, a regional metamorphism, for example, let's say the Indian uh, plate uh, subducting under the Eurasian plate, eventually the ocean basin disappears, so we have a continent to continent collision. So both sides get pushed up to form, form let's say, the Himalaya Mountains. So this is an area of massive regional low-grade metamorphism. And then in the center here, the region, uh, region of high-grade metamorphism. Okay. 
Metamorphism along fault zones occurs at depth and high temperatures. Pre-existing minerals deformed by ductile flow. Myelinites form these regions of ductile, ductile flow formation. Impact metamorphism occurs when meteorites strike their surface. Pro products of these impacts are fused, fragmented rock plus glass-rich ejecta that resemble volcanic bombs called impact tiles. There is metamorphism along a fault zone. So here is along the fault, you have the metamorphic rocks. Okay, there's a zone of myelinite. Okay. Textural variations. Slate is associated with low-grade metamorphism. Nice is associated with high-grade metamorphism. Phyllite and schist are in between. So there's our textual variations caused by regional metamorphism. So there's a low-grade for slates. There's a phyllite or schist or nice. Index minerals and metamorphic grade. Changes in mineralogy occur from regions of low grade metamorphism to regions of high grade metamorphism. Index minerals are good indicators of metamorphic environments. Migmatites are rocks that have been partially melted, represent the highest grade of metamorphism, transitional to igneous rocks. Okay, so there's our metamorphic zones and index minerals. So in shale, well, shale tends to go from low grade to from slate to phyllite, intermediate schist, high grade, it's nice. The index minerals of these areas or, or these re regions, slate, you have a lot of chlorite. But then you can also start getting some muscovite, or just well, very low chlorite, more muscovite and biotite, possibly garnet, maybe starlight. But high grade, our nicest will tend to have sylmanite, maybe some gar garnet and starlights, biotite. Okay, and quartz feldspar could be at any, um, any uh, metamorphic grade. Metamorphic bases. Metamorphic rocks that contain same mineral assemblages and, form, and formed in similar metamorphic environments. Okay, so, so metamorphic bases. So we're going from uh, low to high temperature, from low to great depth, from low to great um, pressure. So here, here on this line, we have our, our uh, well, here's our rocks, our igneous rocks and, up to, and minerals, and up top is the metamorphic rock. So our gneisses can happen in the granular, granulite facies, amphibole facies. Okay, but up here slates are going to be more zeolite and green schist facies. High pressure, low pressure temperature metamorphism is associated with the upper section of subduction zones. Regional metamorphism is associated with colliding continental blocks. Examples include the Appalachian Mountains and the, uh, the Himalayan Mountains. So so here we have uh, contact um, and hydrothermal metamorphism going on here. So we have a subduction zone. When the plate gets deep enough, it starts to partially melt. And there's contact metamorphism where this plume is rising. Regional metamorphism happens in a collision of continental plates. So down here is our high, our high pressure, our high metamorphic metamorphism. Up here is our low metamorphism. And these are those facies from the chart we had just seen a moment ago with our granulite facies, and our amphibole, our green schist, our zeolite um, uh, facies. And now here we have our burial metamorphism over here, and here in the mid-ocean ridges our hydrothermal metamorphism. Interpreting metamorphic environments, mineral stability and metamorphic environments, some minerals are stable at certain temperature and pressure regimes. Examples include the polymorphs andalusite, kyanite, and sylmanite. Knowing the range of temperatures and pressures associated with mineral formation can aid in interpreting the metamorphic environment. Okay, so here's temperature from low to high, depth from low to deep, uh, pressure from low to high. Okay, so these have all the same chemical chemical composition, but they're different polymorphs. They form they form different crystal shapes. So in this regime of pressure and depth and temperature, kyanite would form. That's a bladed blue mineral here and a leucite at low pressure and at the lower temperatures, and sylvanite with more pressure and higher temperatures. That's the end of that chip.